It's the Friday episode of the North Shore Drive podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. We've got Brian Batko talking Steelers Raiders, but especially what's going on with Matt Canada, man. Did he hear those chants? Brian Batko got a chance to talk to him at St- before Steelers practice on Thursday. We'll talk about it here on the Friday episode as well as get you ready for the big game this week. And it's going to be a fun episode of the North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Let's get into it. You are now listening to the North Shore Drive podcast. A show on all things Pittsburgh sports from the writers of the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Hosted by Christopher Carter. Hello, welcome to the North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. I'm your host, Chris Carter, joined today by Brian Batko, one of our Steelers Steelers beat writers here at the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. As always, you can find all of our work at post-gazette.com. Find you check out this show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to this channel. Do not get, only get those episodes, but our daily content that comes out from all of our Post Gazette writers. We have Brian on site here at the UPMC Rooney Sports Complex, standing in front of some trees. Before we talk about that, we got to talk about where I'm at, and that's Mike's Beer Bar, who sponsors this show, the best bar in all of Pittsburgh. Go to Mike's Beer Bar if you're if you're there in, in North Shore for the Steelers, Pirates, or a pit game. Mike's Beer Bar is right across the street from PNC Park. He has the best selection of beer in town, along with 20 televisions that you can pick any game you want in sports to watch. It's the best sports watching place in the city, and they have over 500 different available beers, 30, 300 of those beers being local, and 80 of those local beers being available on tap for flights. And we'll be going Going over the flight of the week, the, the, the Friday flight from Mike's beer bar of all the different fall beers you can start trying out. So we'll talk about it in a bit. Brian, it was a it, it's it's been a it's been a good week. The Steelers were able to get a dub on Monday, but they got to turn it turn, turn it around and play Sunday. But you talked to Matt Canada on Thursday, and the question that everyone wants to know is what the, what is being said around the facility about the fire Matt Canada chance that were heard in the fourth quarter of the Steelers Browns game because it was pretty loud and it was a clear message sent from a lot of Steelers fans. Yeah. Walked up to the mic. He said, Hey, you Jimmy and Blonox out there. Hey, you with your uncle, Bob, you want to come see me? I got two mics right here. All right. Talking to these step up. Woo! No, I'm just kidding. He did not do that at all. If you've ever heard a Matt Canada interview over the last three years, you know that he gets up there Kind of gets on cruise control, uh, you know, grits his teeth to get through those 10 minutes of questions, more or less. And that's about it. Obviously, this week's a little different because he just had 60,000 some people chanting that he shouldn't have a job when he woke up Tuesday morning. I mean, that's just that's difficult for anybody to deal with. And, you know, he did basically what I expected. He said he didn't hear it. He was trying to, uh, you know plot out the rest of the game with his offense, but he has, and he, and he quickly, much like Kenny Pickett after the game, when you asked him about it, Chris, Canada quickly changed the subject more or less to, he has a lot of confidence in his players and that they're going to turn this around and get this right on offense. And he kind of doubled down Vegas reference for this week on Mike Tomlin's comments Tuesday, that uh, that's what you want. You want your fans to be passionate. They understand that. Um, essentially, you know, it, it's on them to produce better results so that you don't hear stuff like that. Absolutely. I agree uh, that that's what that's what he was doing there. I saw some of the clips. I was I was here at the North Shore uh, at the, at the, on the North Shore setting up for this very show while that was going down. But yeah. uh, I, I think that that's kind of the message that comes across. And Matt Canada, he, he's kind of like, you know, just taking the hits over the years. You even retweeted uh, a, 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 an opening statement he gave uh, for one of the uh, for one of the press conferences he had early last year. He was like, all right, bring it on, because he knows that he's going to take some heat. But I, I have to admire this about Matt Kennedy. People may not like his play calling, but he has never once like thrown somebody under the bus, and he could do that with a lot of different people. Like, he, like, like if you go back to this game, and as evaluators, we talked about this with Ray Fittipato, uh, you know, earlier this week. We talked, and we've, we've talked about it, you know, throughout the week. Kenny Pickett is, is not absolved from any blame in this offense. As much as Matt Canada wants to take, wants to, wants to be given the, or people want to give Matt Canada the heat for it, Kenny Pickett hasn't played well. He hasn't seen the field. He hasn't made the right throws. The offensive line hasn't played too great. We're starting to see all the, the analysts come out with all the numbers showing that the offensive line is giving up more pressures to teams that aren't blitzing than any other team in the NFL outside of the New York Jets. Uh, the, the run game hasn't taken off. So there's a lot of things that can be pointed to about this offense being fair to Matt Canada here. But 
I think the biggest thing that everyone's going to be looking at, Brian, is at the bottom line is this offense still hasn't produced results. And this is an offense that there was a lot of excitement for. Kenny Pickett going into his second year, the way he finished last year, the way he looked in training camp, the way he looked in preseason, the way the Steelers moved the ball in preseason, the, the additions they made with Isaac Sayomalo, the growth of George Pickens, the growth of Pat Brown, with the growth of Najee Harris, the addition of Jalen Warren. All those things should have led to something. And I think fans are just getting really impatient for what's going to happen there. Yeah, and that was actually the first question that he got today as the train rolls behind me. We are taking you right down to where the Steelers practice <laughs> on the south side, baby. This is what they uh, you know, go through every day. So I just – I would put it this way. You know, he is pretty savvy when it comes to not getting into a bind the way things were going in, in Chicago earlier this week. If you paid any attention to just the, the mess with the Bears, and I'm not talking about – the coaching staff, but it was more so their third year QB, Justin Fields, kind of some answers that made people wonder if he was upset with his coaching and if that's why mm. their offense was failing. You're not mm. really getting any of that with Steelers unless you really try to read too much into people's comments. The, the first question that Canada got today, somebody on the Steelers beat, was are guys open and Kenny's not seeing them essentially? And, and Canada said, no, I'm never going to put it on one guy. We all have to be better as an offense. So, I mean, that's that's all well and good for him to say in this setting, but obviously behind closed doors, need to do a better job because it is year three now with three different quarterbacks of an offense that isn't producing. And, you know, he is starting to hear it. And, and I'll just say one other thing on this. I mean, with, with these in-between walkthrough and practice group sessions with coordinators, you don't really have a chance to get real introspective. It's not a sit-down, one-on-one right, one right. guy. You know, you're kind of just firing stuff at him, and, you know, he can spend as much time on a question or as little as he wants. So I think it'd be fascinating at some point, and maybe we'll get this after this season if he's out of football or has a different job or whatever and can really open up. But I'd be fascinated just to hear, like, from him, did you feel like even going into this season – People had it out for you a little much. I mean, you know, at training camp, I remember one day he was taking pictures, signing autographs for fans at Latrobe. I know I, it's hard to believe, but it, it happened. I witnessed it. A fan walked up and asked Matt Canada to the sign a toilet seat. Toilet I mean, just seat. That was uh... weird things going on. Obviously, he did not come into the, the offseason with a very high Q rating among his fan base. And I have to imagine that week two is difficult on you in that, in that respect, but also more so, probably more so family and friends around you and, um, you know, I, I let, we don't need to belabor the point really on the, the booze and the Fire Canada stuff, but I'll just tell you this, Chris, and you know this too from being around the facility covering Pitt and the Steelers every week. It, it, a lot of people are talking about this around here on and off the record. It's just a very mm -hmm. large topic right now for better or worse in Pittsburgh. And the bottom line, I think anybody would tell you, whether they play for the Pitt Panthers or the Pittsburgh Steelers, whether they're a player or a coach, a staff member, if they agree with booing, if they don't like booing, I think it does come down to, if you're at home, don't suck and give people a reason to cheer instead of get on you. So it's it's really that simple. Absolutely. want to remind you guys, when we're at Mike's Beer Bar, you can always come out and try one of their flights of all the different beers. They have the first two beers we have in the flight. Mike's, Mike's Friday flights right now are the no, are from Noble Stein Brewery, Caramel Apple Butter, which is a really nice fall beer. And you also have Arsenal Cider, who makes their flying pumpkin. Both of these great fall drinking options for you when you come to Mike's Beer Bar. So check those out as well. Brian, last thing here on Matt Cannon before we, we switch topics and get to our actual actual fan advantage question of the week. Um, just addressing how everything looks. It's obvious that there's some noise here. But the big question that a lot of Steelers fans want to know, what would it take for the Steelers to even move on from Canada? Even if it's not necessarily firing him, but maybe like assigning his roles to somebody else until the end of the year, someone else deals with play calling. He's in there in name only. And then at the end of the year, just then it does that. Is it, Do you think that that is even a foreseeable thing in the near future for the Steelers? Or are they, are they going to let Matt Canada kind of ride this out this year? Not really. I don't think that's really realistic. I mean, you never say never. I, I don't want to tempt fate <laughs> with how bad things could get. I know that much, but um this was a big issue that I had with their play in this offseason is that I don't think there's – we always talk about depth with rosters and players. I don't think there's a lot of depth with the offensive coaching staff right now, and that's mm. why I thought it made a lot of sense to go out and get somebody who was more experienced, had recent play calling on his resume, and they just didn't do that. So 
I mean, you could get creative. You you could ask Mike Sullivan, who has been an NFL offensive coordinator in the past, to mm -hmm. uh, try to run with Canada's playbook and, and maybe just do things differently in game on a Sunday. But uh, I just don't envision that happening, especially not with the Steelers, a team that relies on stability and continuity. And as Mike Tomlin always says, is uh, you know not going to be blowing in the wind or make drastic reactions. So um, I'll just uh, I'll keep that line of thinking. I I don't uh, envision that happening. Absolutely. We'll get to some other so your big questions here on the North Shore Drive podcast and Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Reminder, though, we are brought to you by Mike's Beer Bar, the best bar in all of Pittsburgh, a place that you got to go to if you're here on the North Shore. You come here, whether you're here for a Steelers Pirates or a pit game on the North Shore, go to Mike's Beer Bar. It's right across the street from PNC Park on Federal Street, and they have the best selection in, of beer in all, all in town. They also have over 20 televisions. If you come in and you run, run reserve a table, you can get whatever TV you want on whatever game you want. And that includes NFL games, college football games, college basketball games, NBA games. Baseball, Penguins, Riverhounds, even Premier League action is available at Mike's Beer Bar if you're a true sports fan. Come on in and try one of their different 500 available beers, 300 of those, those beers being local, and 80, 80 of those local beers being available on tap to try out. And you can try out all, all these different flight options. We're going to have new flights every single week when we do our Friday episode of the show just to, tell, just to tell you guys just how many different flavors and options are, are available here. Plus, their food is awesome. Come try their steak on a stone, which is, is a great is a great meal. You come in, you choose your choice, cut a steak, and then you get it brought it on a heated stone that you, with every piece that you cut off, you press into the stone, and then you get to choose how well you want your steak done right in front of you with every single bite. It's a great experience, so come to Mike's Beer Bar, the best bar in all of Pittsburgh. Get your sports fix and experience the best bar in Pittsburgh. And when you do, tell them Chris sent you. We're back here on the North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Chris Carter here with Brian Batko. We're coming at you now with a break in the, the, the show. We're going to talk, talk to you about the Acrisure Fan Advantage, which the Acrisure Fan Advantage every, every year brings you close to the team than ever we have in we have burning questions from Steelers fans one which we'll address on this very show today as well as insiders insider talk with team with uh, experts on the opponents that the Steelers play every single week we'll have that coming up this weekend with Tashawn Reed of the Athletics so stay tuned for that but Ryan Brian, we got to address the uh the question that you got here and it came from on Twitter see why I need help and I guess that could be see why the Steelers need help at this point they're asking where are the plays to Pat Fryermuth especially the two-point conversions. Where are they, Brian? And, Brian, I think this is this would be a heck of a week for them to do it because if you look at this Raiders off, this Raiders defense, not only are they giving up big tight end numbers in the first two games, but there's a familiar face in the middle of that defense that Mike Tomlin even bring up, bring, brought up with respect on Tuesday, and that's former Steelers linebacker Robert Spillane, who notoriously good downhill run run hitter, can stop the run. He stopped Derrick Henry on that goal line stand. A lot of Steelers fans remember from that Titans game years ago. But when you put him in coverage, especially against taller guys, he has been a liability. The Steelers experience that firsthand. Is this the week that maybe Pat Fryermuth gets unlocked in the Steelers offense, Brian? Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. See why I need help. I think Pat Fryermuth. <laughs> and, and look, I, I'm I'm not one to uh, to pat myself on the back or toot my own horn. I. I think I'm pretty self-deprecating when I get things wrong, and I often do, but including the Browns winning last week. So that's a bad uh, prediction by me, but a good one was when I sat here on this same show with you, Chris, and said, George Pickens, George Pickens. Yes, was going to have a big night, he it. and he did, and he did. Uh, and I think it was his dad on Twitter who gave us some love and said this is the best take he's heard. So uh, we're, we're big in, in the Pickens household down there in Alabama, I guess. But I'm telling you, Friar is going to have a, a good week uh, here against the Raiders, and it's it's – Partially, uh, you know, partially what you mentioned with Rob Spillane. Kenny Pickett uh, actually called him an athletic linebacker when we talked to him on Wednesday. I think a lot of fans might disagree with that categorization. But, um, you know, you're right. We, we saw some of Spillane's shortcomings in, in coverage. And, um, you know, he's, he's a guy who's a little bit limited athletically. That's sort of why you end up undrafted, generally speaking, in this league. But he's playing every down for the Raiders. He was all over the field for them in week two against the Bills. That's where you say, is that a good thing or a bad thing uh, that he had 14 tackles considering they got whooped 38 to 10. So, um, you know, that's yeah, they play a lot of zone coverage. But yeah, I think the Steelers, they kind of know what he can and can't do as a player intimately from how long he was here. What if Mike Tomlin would have in his like big, long opening speech, Chris, that he does every week. What if he would have just been like, 
Yeah, and they've got a guy we know well, Rob Spillane. We know he can't cover. We'll be throwing at him all day. <laughs> would you have? You know he would, wouldn't do that. Would you have piped up from the back row and stopped him right there, or would that have just been the very first question when he was uh, done with his preamble? Well, that would have been the very, the very first question because I look at that and I, I think, I, I think, I think I'm like, hey, first of all, you know, you never give anyone bulletin board material, right? That's I know, yeah. Common voice to do, but uh, that's I would have laughed so hard. It, 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 it would have been really funny. He should but, do that one of these weeks just to keep us on his toes when he's doing that very long opening statement. But uh, what else I was going to say is it's also partially, I think a squeaky wheel gets the grease kind of yeah, deal. Um, yeah. You know, I, I talked to Pat Fryer, I mean, asked him about that on, uh, on Wednesday that, Hey, do you, do you kind of get how this is flowing right now offensively? Because I, you know, I even said to him, like, if this were a game where you got 10 targets and George Pickens got three, which happened quite often in 2022, we'd probably be going to Kenny and we'd be going to George and we'd be going to Matt Canada saying, why isn't he more involved now in a game where Pickens gets 10 and you get one, we're coming to you and asking why you're not more involved. Obviously uh, part of that is you need to throw the ball more and have more success through the air in general, but two, you do have a lot of mouths to feed, and it's it's one less with Deontay Johnson out. I get that, but you also want to run the ball. You also want to um, you know try to get Calvin Austin a little bit more involved. Kenny Pickett mentioned that, and I think to his credit, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm totally uh, misreading him, but I think Pat Fryermuth is a team guy who understands uh, that's going to be the case at times and knows that uh, there are going to be weeks where defenses take him away over the middle of the field, and there are going to be weeks, I think like this one, where he's going to be targeted early and often and really making a difference down the seam against a Raiders defense that uh, isn't stopping much of anything at this point. I hear you on that right right there, Brian. You make a lot of really good points. There's our burning question from CY. I need help. If you want to get more get your burning question, go in, in on the show. Go to accurature.com slash fan advantage for more information. Also, tweet at Brian back. Go try to get him you know, on his mailbag. We love to hear questions from the fan. And this episode, this episode, this segment, excuse me, was brought to you by the Accurate Fan Advantage, which brings you closer to the team than ever before. You get exclusive questions, burning questions like this past one, as well as insider conversations with opponent experts like we will have this weekend on the Las Vegas Raiders. We're also brought to you by Savinas Kane and Galucci. The, the, Galucci, their methylene and asbestos lawyers with over 85 years of experience. Call them now for a free consultation. We're also brought to you by GameTime.co. We're buying tickets for your favorite events. Shouldn't be stressful. They give you Game Time is the app that you can download right to your phone. They they give you great deals on last minute tickets, even last minute tickets, or even and they have a best price guarantee that can't be beat. Just download Game Time today. We get exclusive flash deals on tickets for whether they're Steelers games, Pirates games, Penguins games, Pit games, uh, concerts, comedy theater events near you. Game Time is going to come through for you. And the Game Time guarantee means you always get the best price. If you find tickets for the same sex in a row for less, the same event somewhere else, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Can I have the tickets without stress with Game Time? Download the Game Time app and create an account. Use code PITT PIT for $20 off your first purchase. Or go to the website. GameTime.co. Terms get this and apply. Create an account and redeem code PITT PIT for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Back here on the North Shore Drive podcast, Chris Carter here with Brian Batko from the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, breaking it down for you, the Steelers. Brian, I'm going to ask you a very simple question here. If the Steelers are going to win su- Sunday night in Las Vegas, they haven't won a- on the road against the Raiders since the 90s. 95. 95. If they're going to win this game, what is the best path to success here? What's the biggest factor they have to capitalize on? And they've never beaten the Raiders in Las Vegas. What the heck? No. Oh, wait. Oh, this is their <laughs> first time they're, they're ever playing in this city. That'll be fun. If you're out there. If you're a fan watching and you're going to be in Vegas, uh, hit me up. Maybe we'll sit down at a table, see what those cards do for a little yeah. bit. But, um, I think, you know, the, the biggest thing, uh, there's two. On offense, um, you know, you, you have to you have to make sure that you can exploit a defense that, that, again, they let the Bills do whatever they want. They play a ton of zone. They're going to give you easy completions underneath. Don't turn the ball over, okay? Yep. Just, just don't make some of those same mistakes that Kenny Pickett made. In week two, you know, we've seen two bad versions of Pickett rear its ugly head and in different ways. I mean, week one, it was, you know, inaccuracy and and kind of just bad reads inefficient. Week two, it was decent yardage total at 222, but, uh, you know, really, really head scratching decision making. So, um, you know, you just you got to find a way to to beat a defense that doesn't have many big names in the secondary. Um, So I'm not going to say sit here and you know, establish the run, slam your head into a brick wall where the Raiders might actually be able to do something against you there. But I, I think, you know, 
you got to get it going uh, passing game wise. It's it's that simple. I think the Raiders might not have the horses personnel wise, but, you know, Patrick Graham is their defensive coordinator. He's been in the league for a long time. He knows what he's doing. He's going to make Kenny Pickett beat you, I think. So um, that's where I'm going on that one. And then the other side of the ball, uh, you got to get to Garoppolo. They haven't allowed yeah. a sack through two games. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that's partially getting the ball out quick. Terrell Austin made the point today that Garoppolo is a, a very experienced player at that position. You're really not going to fool him with anything you bring pressure wise. So, I mean, their tackles, Colton Miller, he's a talented guy, first round pick. But on the other side, at right tackle, Jermaine Illuminor, he's mm-hmm. just kind of a guy. So um, it's been decent tackle play. But I, I think TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith, uh, they need to get after it. And I think they will. And the Steelers will need to protect Kenny Pickett from Max Crosby, who's up there with one of the best edge rushers in football. That that train of great edge rushers facing them does not seem to stop after staffing to face Nick Bosa and Miles Garrett. Before we get to our f- official predictions here on the North Shore Drive podcast, I remind you with with us being sponsored by Mike's Beer Bar, we have my my days my days uh, uh Fridays flights at Mike's Beer Bar. Uh, the last two beers are here on the fall list on the fall list of beers here. Rivertown has the Headless Wiley, which is a really good simple fall beer. It's a little bit lighter on, on the side of it. You also have the Low Lev Sonnen, which is a little bit heavier. Gives you a, give you a little bit of that dankness in the in the fall taste of things. So check out all the fall beers as we're starting to get things. Leagues haven't started changing yet, but that'll be coming soon and you want to get your fall beer on at Mike's Beer Bar. That being said, Brian, let's get to our predictions here. Okay. Steelers, Raiders, Sunday Night Football. Give me the, the turning point that you see coming in the game that determines who wins and your final score. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's it's hard not to imagine uh, yet another strip sack, a sack fumble type deal happening for, for Watt or Highsmith. I mean, yeah, even the, the role players are doing their part uh, with that. You know, Montrevious Adams punching a ball out, Cole Holcomb punching a ball out. So, I mean, I think this Raiders run game has not done anything. Josh Jacobs averaging 1.6 mm-hmm. yards per carry. Mm-hmm. through two games i guess you could look at it as hey the steelers haven't been good at stop on the run so maybe this is where they get on track but i happen to think that they're just not uh, as good at doing that this year as they were last season when he led the league in rushing and plus he he's not necessarily in mid-season form considering he had the contractual dispute this offseason stayed away for much of training camp and preseason so I'm not as I'm not nearly as worried about Jacobs as I was about Nick Chubb and Christian McCaffrey, put it that way. So I think the Steelers actually dominate this game, Chris. I, if I went back and looked at every prediction I've made for the Post Gazette, I can't recall too many times I've had the Steelers winning by this much. But I'm going to go Pittsburgh on the road in a Legion Stadium that's probably going to feel more like it's in the Strip District instead of right by the Vegas Strip. Ooh. Twenty-four Raiders six. Whoa, that is a beatdown you got there. I do think the Steelers win this game, Brian, but I think it's a little bit closer simply because okay. I do think they're going to have some struggles on offense still. But this is a Raiders team that they faced last year with Derek Carr, who I have as a better quarterback than Jimmy Garoppolo. Yep. Garoppolo yep. does get the ball out faster. But I'm not high hard. on the Raiders. That's just a major takeaway because, you know, we know Man. that I, I picked the Steelers to lose the first two weeks. So, you know, I'm not super high <laughs> on them, but I just I don't think the Raiders are very good. I, I agree that they're not all that. I think that this is the week, though, that they start to clean things up and they get some things done. It won't be a fully dominant, complete win, but I think it will set up the chance for that next week against the Houston Texans. I'm saying Steelers win 23-13. I think it's still a, a convincing win. Like They, they win comfortably uh, yeah. or so. But is this gonna? I think it's still gonna be ugly. But you're gonna have your big plays, and I think the defense will create some big opportunities there. He's Brian Batko, the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. I'm Chris Carter, also the Pittsburgh Post Gazette. And this has been the Friday edition of the North Shore Drive podcast. T- tune into to, to this show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and all of our daily content on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. And check out post-gazette.com as we keep releasing all of our great coverage. Brian, Ray, and Jerry always there for Steelers coverage at practice and leading up to the game. Minka Fitzpatrick is set to play. That was also made clear on Thursday, so that'll be a huge factor going into this game. We'll see if the Steelers have it. Tune in for the post-game show where we'll have Adam Bittner and Paul Zeiss breaking it down and giving you their thoughts in the game. And don't forget, Saturday, I'll be doing my show with a Raiders expert breaking down the final aspects of this game and what to expect. Looking forward to Sunday Night Football. We'll see you here on the North Shore Drive podcast very soon. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the North Shore Drive podcast from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. If you watch this video on YouTube, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. For three months of digital access to post-gazette.com at 99 cents, click the link below in the description.